the program a defense of the gospel a defense of the gospel is an interdenominational tv religious tv radio program uh, we come bring for you every weekday and of course that's on thursday with a live broadcast and a rebroadcast on saturday 4 to 5 p.m on the radio and 5 to 6 p.m on tv of course it's on akbc tv channel 45 on the radio it's 90.5 fm you can also join us on our start times on the channel 113 a defense of the gospel brings to you seasoned men of god in an outside acquired state with the aim of providing answers to doctrinal issues and of course simple questions that you may ask all right we it is sponsored by remedy for victims of religious and religious persecution and discrimination and this day it is no exception we have great men of god here on sit and um, as usual i want to introduce them accordingly first of all let's welcome Rev bishop emma gospel is song he is the national publicity secretary of the pfn bishop so good to have you on the program welcome always my pleasure to be here thank you so much and we have the number one christian in aquaba sibum state in the person of the chairman of khan and talking about reverend doctor Ndwese Ekwere. so good to have you on the program sir it's a joy to, to see you here and of course, we also have a member of the advisory board of Khan, as well as the Methodist Church Nigeria, Yanya Sekut is right here with us. The very Reverend Dr. Barrister Otwekong Wukud. So good to have you here, Doctor. Thank you very much for having me. All right, so our topic today says no scripture is of any private interpretation. I take that again. No scripture is of any private inter interpretation that's a topic today and you can check out that on the, in the book of uh, second peter chapter 1 verse 20. second peter chapter 1 verse 20. Uh, is it really so well that's where we want to dig deep and find out how it is all right having said that my name is etup ikon and the anchor and this program is produced by elder koko imadu let's set sail well um, today there's no woman, no 25 or 35 affirmative. <laughs> uh, <laughs> great man of God. Uh, am I intimidated? No, I'm not. Uh, let's get started. Sir, the verse and the topic, what is it all about? No scripture is of any private interpretation. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20. What is that all about? <clears throat> Thank you for... Uh, as usual, let me yes. start with you. <laughs> I wanted to comment on that. Yes. Thank you for that opportunity to... Uh, talk to our viewers about uh, how dangerous it is for an individual either me or anybody to bring in personal interpretation to uh, the word of God As the Bible calls it prophecy of scriptures in that second Peter 1 20 if we read from verse 18 uh, Peter was addressing uh, the issue of that time which has become the issue of our time and it says, uh, the voice that we heard from heaven uh, when we're in the holy mount in, the, in verse 19, it said, but we have a short word of prophecy in verse 20. It said, but this is a warning, knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture, in other words, no scripture is of any private interpretation. Now, if you look at 1 Corinthians 2 verse 4, 1 Corinthians 2 4 say that people use enticing words of human wisdom to explain scripture in other words eloquency that is intellectual knowledge to explain scripture and if you look at second timothy chapter 4 verse 3 second timothy chapter 4 verse 3 says that in the last days people are going to have itching ears that's seeking to hear those motivational talks those things that will fit our whims and caprices and i'm sure it is on this background that peter warned that there should be no personal interpretation mm. to the holy scriptures mm. okay. okay yes uh, in that case um is it correct to say that um prophecies are creative work inspired by the holy spirit you know and uh, that if yes how do we know when words of prophecy are decorated with private interpretations uh, you see uh I, I, when we get to such a case, I always uh, make an analogy. For a start, uh, you see, there was a time 
water, this uh, public water used to run uh, using galvanized uh, pipes. Right. Yes. And once that pipe is rusty, okay, every water, every mm -hmm. bit of water that comes out of it mm. is rusty. Mm -hmm. And so, if somebody, the Bible says, by the fruits, ye shall yeah. know them. And most times, uh, uh, you see prophecy, people, who, even though the, 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 the Holy Spirit uh, inspires prophecy, but people choose to decorate the prophecy by the, uh, with their private uh, intellectual sure. knowledge. And uh, you, you look at the source of the prophecy, you discover that it is rusty. And once the source of the prophecy is rusty, everything that comes out from the source mm. is rusty. And so you, you look at the, 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 the fruit, you now know that whatever is coming, what, the, the, what base the fruit is not very, very uh, good for the growth of anybody. And so anything that comes out from the tree is not good fruit. So whoever uh, uh, thinks that uh, he can make prophecy any way he likes and uh, call it prophecy and deceive the people, one has to be very careful and know to, how to align what he's speaking with the word of God. Any prophecy that does not come to fruition is not what to be relied upon. Any prophecy that does not come from good source by the fruit, you see, then it is not to be relied upon. Prophecy should come uh, it sh should come and uh, uh, be interpreted and be seen as being fulfilled as per the prophecy. Not just talking a thing. You see, a lot of people will begin to make pronouncement to, to uh, an extent that nothing even, they will create problems without solutions. A problem should have a solution and a proper solution at that. Okay, in, in that case, can such a rusty prophecy as it is now, as according to you, you know, can it be thought as a lesson to others? I, I mean, if if uh, something is bad, why do you now mm. teach it to the to people? Somebody. Except probably to let the people know that this thing is bad, and so don't don't use it. A bad thing can necessarily be exposed to somebody to the extent of a warning. Don't use this one; it's dangerous. I mean, the one can say it is a teaching, teaching to the extent that please don't go there; it's dangerous, but not. To be useful to anybody or to, to be used as a good source of material or a reliable content of the scriptures to anybody okay uh it, it seems it's a rusty prophecy yes uh, a lot of people misuse it for whatever gain maybe personal or self-aggrandizement and things like that but what is the, the the place of the spiritual standard the authenticity of god's word in such a rusty prophecy Yes, uh, thank you very much. Let me first of all uh, align myself with uh, the, what the uh, Bishop Emma Song kicked off by telling us on why, why was that verse put important? Yes, I always like to give uh, a humanetic on matters. First of all, Peter was the leader of the apostles. Mm -hmm. He was the one that Jesus said, upon this church, upon, upon this rock, I will build my, my church. church. Mm. And so he saw false teachers mm. come into the fold. He saw heresy coming in. He saw people coming and claiming mm. to be apostles after the 12, the 75, after the 70. He then saw a whole mixture. And so he also knew that very soon, he will leave the earth. He will die. Mm. And so when you read that second Peter from chapter from verse 1, from chapter 14, 14 and 15, you see him say, I have to say this. Mm. Mm. I have to say this. Mm. So in case I die, mm. since there I'm too no, good to die. Knowing that shortly I must leave Thank you. this tabernacle. Mm. Shortly I must leave mm. this tabernacle. Mm. So this okay. uh, first, uh, second Peter is like a, a last testimony mm. of Peter of the apostle of the one the leader of the apostles mm. warning all if you check that second peter mm. cha chapter one verse one mm. you see he was warning all christians mm. all who believe in mm. the faith mm. please false teachers are all over the place mm. they are misinterpreting the word of our master mm. 
They are now twisting it for the agreed. Mm. They are now twisting it to make money. They are now twisting it and taking us away from salvation. Please, beware of them. This was the last will. You, you know, let me mm. use our language. Yes. Uh, mm. So Peter was, the, was giving his last testimony. And now, that is why I always commend this text to all Christians. Mm. Second Peter. Mm. Please go through it. You see the various steps. Down to your question. The issue of the authenticity of each of this. You don't need individual to come and tell you that it is a Hebrew interpretation or a, a Greek interpretation. They are simply no interpretations. Hmm. All are transliteration. Hmm. If come in, a, in a Latin is come then they are just building come to come is it not is it, way of all, yes well, but let me just quickly put it in case mm. i don't have this the bible is the simplest book in the world the simplest english you do not you will not see so many idiomatism idiosyncratic mm. phantomism and very simple mm. uh, bishop Mm. It is also the most widely read book in the world. Yes, That's true. Yes, yes, it is also the highest print, mm. printed book in the world. Mm. It has about 5 billion printed. So one person cannot work up and... So you just <laughs> don't can stand up mm. and begin to imprint what 5 billion people have in it. their hands. Mm. The second, let, let, let me warn you more. Yeah. The second to the Bible in the number of printed and the number in circulation is the words of uh, Mao Zedong which he forced on the people of China. The communists he forced it on the over 1 billion people. That's why it is it's taken. Mm. And it is only 820 million printed. The Bible is way up there. 5 billion. The third is the books of Harry Potter. 400 million. The Bible is up there mm. at 5 billion. And still counting. Mm. And still counting. That's right. 7 billion people in the world and 5 billion of the word of mm. God mm. Lay, lying in our hands. Simple English, Jesus wept and he came and said. And so, why would now people come out and begin to say, eh, he, he, what know. he meant was I that he that. wanted not to go, <laughs> so that when he goes, he goes, the polus of the palulus mm. and papulu, papaloso. This is wrong! Like the commonly used adage, nsu, anem, ki koma. Yeah, yes! So anem, ke grit. Yes! Let me also warn you more. Mm. My grandmother, which uh, some of our people here know, was not literate. But one book she could read, mm. in Efik, was the Bible. Was the Bible. She read the Bible. All I did as a child was to mm. sit on her feet mm. and take down the verses when the I preacher remember. is preaching. I remember. Yes. Mm. Thank you. Yes, my cousin. <laughs> cousin. <laughs> he will, she, I will pick down even at primary two, primary three. Primary, <laughs> and she goes back, opens the Bible and reads it. Mm. She couldn't write, but she could read the Bible. And understood. And understood it. So we don't need... That is what Peter was telling us. Mm. We don't need any interpretation. Any interpretation is false. But what happens if a man of God or the so uh, so called uh, teacher of the word feels that um, he's highly anointed and highly blessed? Does that mean that his personal interpretation sums it all about what God says in a particular matter? Can I come in mm. then? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, thank you, our kind chairman. Uh, your presence alone has validated this word which we all believe and uh, Reverend Dr. Baris Altuiko has, has answered all the questions <laughs> you, you, you even want to ask mm. again uh, but let me let me say that uh, in Acts chapter 18 24 remember I said something happened mm. in 18 24 there was a man too that had that uh, eloquency mm. uh, that uh, 
human ability. You see, in, you see, academic intelligence or native intelligence cannot be applied where the, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is supposed to be applied. Uh, and then that, that, that is on the background. But you ask a question, how do we know somebody is having personal interpretation? I'll give three, three parameters now. Number one, when God did not send him, the can't chairman said that already about the rusty pipe. Jeremiah 28 verse 15, he, he, said, he said, he came and told us prophecy, but God did not send him. Number two way to know uh, is the person's lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, the, bitter, the bitter water cannot bring out the sweet water. Of course, uh, that is in James chapter 3, 15 to 17. James 3, 15 to 17. Uh, you cannot be a bitter river and bring out sweet water. Uh, I think that's what uh, uh, our countryman, uh, yes, is, he, he, he nailed it very well. And then in Acts chapter 5, verse 36 and 37, Gamaliel finished the matter. He said, you see these people, it's a movement, it's a wave. Because it's a movement and it's a wave and doesn't have the foundation, which uh, Reverend Otto Tukan talked about. He said, watch, give them time. It will fizzle out. So one of the criteria to know that these ones are using personal interpretation, it does not stand the test of time. So somebody is talking about how his grandmother uh, taught him the Bible and he wrote, and the grandmother believed, and he has come. Paul himself told Timothy, say that thing which your grandmother believed, which he handed over to your mother, and which your mother taught you, is the fact that you are exhibiting now. Anything that is just created in 2020 during COVID-19, <laughs> anything just coming in in the afternoon during Akwai Boom uh, Independence Day, it will fizzle out before December of another year. It will not stand the test of time. Because we are talking about the foundation of Christianity. And the Bible, the Bible says if the foundations be destroyed, yeah, what can the righteous do? So to me, those are parameters. To but but, okay. but, but yes. apart from that, Second uh, Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says all scripture is given by the inspiration of Thank God mm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. That the man of God may be perfect. All scripture, not uh, it's already there to it's make there. a man of God perfect unto all good work. If a man of God begins to, I mean, just rises up and thinks that uh, because like you said, excuse me, that, that is properly, I mean, highly placed mm, and is mm. popular, and it begins to say, this is all the scripture mm. is mm. given, mm. and uh, by mm. inspiration, it's not enough to convince any responsible, spiritually minded person. It's just putting colors. Mm. It's simple coloration, simply making the thing to, invite, making a jest of the gospel. Mm -hmm. By me, as far as I'm concerned, it's that private mm. interest, concern, decoration, putting and letting people uh, have uh, be attracted to the person. Now, no longer Christ. the Christ. Okay. Okay. No, Christ. no wow. longer the Christ. That's mm. powerful. People will, will yeah. like to mm. look at who is speaking mm. and why is he saying, okay. For Demas <laughs> had forsaken me. What about that? I mean, and confusing the mm. entire generation of the people. And of course, like it's been said already, in these last days, ears are itchy. Mm. Mm. itchy and uh, these are the kind of things people like listening to mm. because it looks like a drama. It's a social uh, and it's issue, new. And you know, new. and it's new. Mm. The people like going there. But like the bishop has said, it won't last long. Mm. It certainly will fail because what does not come from God is just Has temporary. It's transient. It's transient. You know? Yes, I want to add there. Yes. Uh, well, uh, presenter, you did say member, I can't advise it. Mm. I'm the chairman. Okay. Now, I want to use this moment, which I like to thank AKBC and all of you. Well, to advise, we must pray for the spirit of discernment. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, very important. Let yes. us look at First Corinthians chapter I 12, love that. Yeah. verse 10. Come on, let's go. That we must have that spirit. First of Corinthians chapter chapter 12. Okay, verse 10. Okay, 
that is where we see that that is a gift mm. which all Christians must pray for. Descending of spirit. Descending of spirit. Mm. Very important. Be very important for all Christians. But we rush for miracles first. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. That spirit of descent. Yeah, we rush for the miracles. So when those deceptions come, which they will we surely lack, we come. Lack that Since 2000 years ago, they were there. And so the Christian must pray for the spirit of discernment to be able to identify. That spirit will let you know that this one is false. That spirit will identify the false doctrine. It will identify the deception. It will identify and put you back, back into the truth. So by the time the person starts the uh, abracadabra and whatever, you, you already know because you have the spirit. It's a gift. Secondly, let us also look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Do not believe every spirit, mm, mm, mm. but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. Mm. Because many false prophets have gone into the world. That's right. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Mm. Many false prophets have gone into the world. That's so right. test every spirit. Don't take what they are saying. Hope they are parading everywhere mm. on crusades, on mm. radio, on television. They are, they are everywhere. They, they've been there. So you must test every spirit. Then they say, Be alert. Mm. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Say, Beware. Lest anyone takes you captive and deceive you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. Hmm. So I, I, I still have a little problem here because um, I think of two or three editions of this program like that so when we had a lady, one of the ladies here, she talked about um, dogma, tradition and uh, you know things like that. In terms of worship, a personal denomination can do that and all of that. So what then would we say is the acceptable parameter for the interpretation of the scripture. Yeah, let me let me come in there. I, I know I know where you are going to. <laughs> there's, no there's no interpretation of the scripture. <laughs> I, interpret I know the scripture. I know where it's going to. Uh, you are talking about doctrinal differences, yes. mm. uh, styles of worship. Well, the, whatever you call this material I'm wearing, it's in the market. But what you sew with it is now your design, mm -hmm. your fashion. Mm -hmm. Many denominations are free. In their, in their, not like you said, not interpretation of scripture. Yes, right. In their style of worship yeah. to be different, but so far, so far you don't use this material to kill somebody, to suffocate somebody and kill somebody. You are free to use. You can use it for rapper. You can use it for hair tie. I think they can use it for tie. Mm -hmm. So, so the different doctrine, like uh, Ephesians four, verse four and five, there is one body, and one spirit. Mm -hmm even as ye are called in one hope of your calling mm. and it says one lord one faith and one, one baptism god. so yes. the church is one. one but what we are talking today is that individuals whether they are from different doctrines should not use their personal whims and caprices mm -hmm. to download scripturally inspired verses don't use your personal your idiosyncrasy don't let it rub on scripture. There are centrality of the gospel. The cross of Jesus, he was born of Virgin Mary. He, he grew within time. He was betrayed. He died on the third day. He rose up and he's coming back again. Of course, the sacraments, the baptism, the communion, everybody stands on that, no matter the church. But when one person now comes out and said, no baptism, mm -hmm. no altar call, no second coming, I think there's a problem there. You know. Yes, like, uh, like, like the the passage, uh, mm -hmm. doctor even referred the, the next verse, First uh, John chapter four and verse two. It says, Hereby know ye the spirit of mm. God. Okay. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof mm. ye have heard that it should come. And even now, already is in yeah. the world. Wow. Yeah. wow! The spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. It's just this verse simply means that there are core issues that one does not have to change. 
Central they are just there. Circles. There are central spiritual issues mm. that must be, be, be known and observed and practiced by everybody, except yes. you do that. Mm. Then you are now the other way. Mm. And if you are the other way, uh, you are of mm. all men most miserable. Mm. Yeah. Yes, uh, to true. add to that, you see, uh, that is exactly what Khan is all about. All that profess. Yeah, I'm of Methodist, he is of Bible, he is of Pentecostal. Mm. We, we share the belief. In fact, we all men be one. one. Mm. We, in fact, in Methodist, the doctrines don't change. Because they are, even in the Constitution, we don't change the doctrine. But what changes is the practices. practices. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, let me wow you. In 1517, when uh, Luther pasted the 95 thesis on the wall. He was not con complaining about the different uh, doctrines. What he was complaining was the practice of indulgence. That was a practice. Today, that practice is not there. It was at that time. And he now said, no, it is wrong. You don't sell uh, the handkerchief and tell somebody your sins are forgiven. And it was basically done those cells at that time was done in 1570 was done to build the roman uh, the saint peter's uh, cathedral that was it and so he mentioned it was not the difference of, so what you have as lutheran church today that came out of roman catholic because it was because of the practice of indulgences it was not because of doctrinal issues doctrines like uh, the country has said that one mm. baptism Jesus Christ is the Lord, the Holy, communion. Holy Communion, He will Dead come again, and, uh, salvation, and second coming. even Sacrosanct. one of the, uh, I tell you, in 2006 in South Korea, about four churches came and signed the justification by faith, which was expounded by John Wesley. They signed an agreement accepting the justification by faith. That, that was industrial, uh, but not practices. Anglican came out not because of uh, it was a practice, not because of the doctrine. doctrine. Henry the Fourth, the Eighth, wanted to marry Anne, and when it was not allowed they would, for him to divorce, he, he disagreed and then said, "Now it is now we now call ourselves Anglican. You Roman Catholic, take your own." And that, that, it was practice. It wasn't uh, so doctrinal issues, and just like circumstance. the Bible, are uh, second. Anybody that now tries to interpret, shifting the ancient, shift those things, um, interpreting his own whims and caprices. So the second uh, right uh, yes. private interpretation. Okay. All right. And um, just before we go on the break right now, because uh, we we'll like our viewers, our listeners out there to join us. You know, on um, the other parts of the program, I have just one very important question I want to ask now. How can we curb the differences in scriptural interpretation by private individuals? How do we, you know, get these things, you know, restricted? One, let them what, stop what, what, one, one of the one of the ways is what we are doing right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking out. Yes. Yes. One of the ways. You see, the That's problem true. with man which is what I have always been saying anyway, is that people see evil and they keep decide to quiet. keep quiet. Wow. And keeping quiet is a very great way of nurturing evil. Mm. You know, people don't want to talk, so they won't die. People don't want to talk, so they won't. You see, there is a lot of commercialization of mm. the gospel That's now. True. The mercantile gospel, mm. you know, so people are virtually they, they mm. me because some if my brother uh, likes to uh, handle mm. this pain, mm. he handles this pain always, and he, when he sees me handle this pain, it okay. will be very difficult for him to say don't handle it because uh, he uses this pain too. But if he sees this pain, and perhaps this pain is not to be used, and he. Uh, he refrains himself from it, he sees me use it, he will now be bold to say, this pen you are holding is bad. If he has the spirit of God and spirit of uh, the boldness of the spirit in him. But people these days don't pick out. That is why the society is bad, the church is going a wire and just doing anything. Everybody is out to, to say the gospel. Uh, uh, I know somebody say, told me the other day, but you don't go to people's office. Well, you've never come to this man. Mm. 
The other day, somebody stopped me somewhere. You've not been coming to the local government yet. I say, am I a staff? <laughs> what must I be coming to local government to do? He, the, to he some said, he said, hey. he said, he said, he said, I'm surprised. Mm. Are there people like you? Mm. But people, your mates, are coming to the local government every day. And sometimes when they see them, they close. They don't. They don't say they're not. You see, these are some of the things you, you, you speak out. Tell the people, use the scriptures, tell them, talk to them. Because otherwise, these things will continue. Irrespective of how... The other day, I, I discovered that people who are very highly placed, and people worship, unfortunately worship them like God, they condescended to doing things of a very, at a very low level. I mean, so, mm. for instance, what is happening in Akwai Boomstead, what has been happening... and it, God was trying to, uh, was taming the tide, but now it is working, even in the Christendom. People will be writing petitions, and you see people who are tamed to be God. They will stoop down so low and be writing petitions, trying to spoil their grandchildren, you know, and all that. These are the kind of things people should say, hey, mm. okay, yeah, that is these people, can, uh, I don't do don't it. Do but it. people will say, if that kind of a man does it, then I can do it, oh, I don't have to ask because they are they God? Stop somebody from doing a particular let thing. Me the, give you the okay. Let me add to the give you the strong voice. I, I, I want to I want to take a break. Sorry, okay. sorry okay. about yeah. that. I want to take a break right now because I know uh, this question is very important, you know. We'll come back to how, it. how we, yes, yes. certainly we'll come back to come it. Back. I have yes. another follow up question to that. Was lovely. You know, um, the Bible says you should go into the world and preach the gospel, you know, bringing men into the kingdom. Mm. Isn't proliferation of uh, religion, as it were, you know, all the churches all over the place, and no. part of this? Well, we'll come back to all of that when we take this break. All right, so we just joined us. The program is still the defense of the gospel. If you're reaching out to us here from the AKPC, we are live right now on uh, AKPC 45 and, of course, on Radio Kwaibum 90.5 FM. You can also join us on the Star Times on the channel 113. Don't forget, the defense of the gospel is also live streaming on Facebook. All you need to do is just go to Facebook and then the Defense of the Gospel, you are where we are. You can as well reach out to us uh, through the phone number 0808 425 4545. We are also on the YouTube, also on live on uh, Facebook, the Defense of the Gospel. The program is sponsored by Remedy for Victims of Religious Persecution and uh, Discrimination. And of course, we bring on the seasoned men of God in and outside of Kwaba Sibum State to give answers to some doctrinal questions and of course, contemporary as it were. And I still have with me um, the National Publicity, Publicity um, Secretary. Secretary of the uh, PFN in Nigeria is none other than the Bishop Emma Gospel is some my guest and of course the chairman of our Kwaibom State uh, Christian Association of Nigeria uh, the Reverend Dr. Andwesu Ekwere is also here not forgetting chairman advisory board of Khan and um, that's talking about the minister with the Methodist Church in Nigeria in our circuit the very Reverend Dr. Barrister Otekoku my very good friend so we are trying to see how we dissect the gospel and give answers to your contemporary questions as well as some doctrinal questions my name is Ito Ikon and the anchor so it's about time we open our phone lines so you can join us don't forget the number to call is 0808-425-4545 my director if you can get that on the screen 0808-425-4545 that's the number to call and please 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 when you call us irrespective of the devices you're listening to us from either the the television or the radio turn it down turn it down i mean the volume so we can talk we don't need that whole back we don't need that distortion we don't need that you know obstruction as the case may be once you turn it down we shall have a free flow conversation so the number to call again is 0808 425 4545 from now we'll be taking your calls and of course i'm um, deliberating on some of the questions we ask be asking as it were so let's see how we pick your calls first call um if you're ready then i'm ready otherwise we'll go back to the question we're dealing with at hand so maybe we should treat that out right away before we go back to the calls yes we're still talking about um how to curb the differences yeah. in scriptural interpretation by private individuals and i did say something as a follow-up i said could it be as a result of the proliferation of churches as it were even when the bible you know proclaimed that we should go and preach the gospel and bring more souls to the kingdom 
Is this also a problem, as it were? Yeah, yes, well, like, uh, uh, with respect to Khan chairman and our chairman of uh, board of advisors who can here, let, let me throw my, my own uh, light, a little suggestion on how to cope this issue of private interpretations of scriptures. Number one, I think uh, an Igbo proverb said, when elders are in the house, the goat can never use the rope to commit suicide. Mm. I think so. I think the first thing there is the presence of elders. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. Talk about how the elders summon the these apostles to find out what they were teaching. Uh, find out what they were teaching. I think we've lacked that in our generation. People are too independent. Uh, ministries, even those who are in denomination, are too independent. We should get to people's cassette or TV program and confront them. And said that's not what the bible says and uh, number two i suggest that uh, people should return back to mentorship spiritual mentorship uh, quite a lot of youths especially and this thing happened among some group of age yeah uh, oh, age, mm -hmm. i don't know it's always within some age group bracket mm -hmm. age bracket this false teaching we are talking about so i think it's a lot of a lot of uh, juvenile involved a lot of delinquency involved mm. uh, spiritual delinquency lack of proper uh, teaching I, I i go back and uh, i remember matthew 28 verse 19 matthew 28 verse 19 he said go ye and teach mm. where well, mark said go and preach but matthew said go and teach teach and raise disciples yes. so we are no more having that discipleship classes mm. uh, too many preachers on pulpit including me i mean mm -hmm. we're just exploding mm. say yeah say yeah mm. yeah lift your hand yeah yeah too many yeah yeah from beginning to the end we've not entered into teaching teaching, teaching is lacking teaching is lacking sir so i think that's one of the ways to cap uh, this thing uh, the private interpretation of, of okay. yes. apart from that the proliferation mm. okay like he was talking oh, okay. about of uh, people on their wants, own. like uh, like uh, i think doctor mentioned the other people no longer you see in independence and the, the in fact impatience, I, impatience yeah, and like i said earlier the 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 greed for money yes. if i'm staying i'm suffering for this man and see the quantum of okay. money that is coming in if on. i had also started my, my, my church of cop and paper <laughs> international incorporated <laughs> uh, i should all and i will be the president and founder the managing director and all that mm. I, people will come looking for me and i will also be the ogre and they will be wearing the whatever kind of uh, uh, gown and will be carrying a cap and, and that's what Satan was thinking in heaven. Yes. Yes. The same thing. I mean, <laughs> <so> what, <laughs> the same who is the other yeah. person? Yeah. And once that is done, you mm. big, big names. Mm. And unfortunately, in the social in our society, they honor these big names like mm. no man's business. Okay. And once that happens, yeah, everybody yeah. wants to be like that. Mm. A simple. Well, I will just give two if you give me a chance. Mm. Uh, the first will be to Christians themselves. Right. And I'm taking it from Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 11 if you read it peter advised in you know, that is last testament he said have faith in christ so i'm talking to the christians i said have faith in christ practice moral excellence have the knowledge of god as a person not what somebody tells you mm -hmm. have patient endurance do what we call scriptural holiness mm -hmm. Scriptural holiness is in two forms. The first is for you to practice the holiness that is in the Bible mm. and then to believe in the word of God in the Bible, not in interpretation. Have brotherly affection and then love for neighbor. Then the second aspect in coming it, I speak to the prophets or the intending prophets and those that are still existing. Mm. You know what you are doing. Mm. They know it. Okay. They know it is wrong. They are cautious in the night mm. when they are sleeping. Okay, they know it. They know what they are doing is wrong. Mm. All they are doing is scheming for their greed. Their conscience is telling them, but they don't want to stop because of that greed. And I, I count them to that second Peter chapter two. If you look at chapter two, verse twelve to seventeen, it tells of the destruction. That are waits. That are waits for us mm, prophets. Mm, mm, mm. 
it says you are, you know you are a false prophet mm. you are accursed you will let me read please, so please. one moment just one please. moment let us read it because it's very very important chapter 2 verse 12 to 17 it says therefore i intend always to remind you of these things do you know that you have you are establishing truth that you have i think it's right as long as i am in this body since you know that the putting off of my body will be so as our jesus christ showed me you see that he knew that this is going to come out and he warned that look i am going to leave but i want you to know what is happening to know it's going to come you are caused mm. once you lead people away from God. So there's and a penalty. Know, there's a penalty. Mm. All right, let's see how we can take some calls now. A whole lot of the people are trying to call. And then please, once again, I appeal to you to turn down the volume on your radio set or your TV set, whichever medium you're listening to us from. So we take your calls now. Keep it coming. First call on the line. Hello, good day to you. And welcome to the program. Uh, good day, sir. Very well. Thank you for joining us. Your name and location. I'm Imamu Kamek, Good day, everybody. Good day, Good day, Thank you. Good day. All right, Imamu, go ahead. Uh, I want to say that I appreciate you people coming up now uh, to talk about this issue. Thank you. 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 They are not going to, they are not going to see that in Christianity, especially in Pentecostal. Then my brother is, there's a reason why he even was born. And there's a reason why his hand was born. is to check net and to correct. I believe in the days of uh, Archbishop Ben in house, some churches were suspended for teaching wrong doctrine. And there's a church in Putaka when I was in River State, that was suspended for one year. The man didn't teach them. I don't know whether it is constitutional, but this is what the Pentecostal should go to, or the leaders of faith, or the fathers of the brother, to go in, call the person in question. This thing you are saying, like, let me say that there's no reason. Is it not written in the scripture? A man's other time, a, a very popular man in the Bible says that Christ is the father of Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. Man, yeah. <laughs> can't see a man be in the studio. So when a man say Christ Jesus, Christ is the Father of Jesus, can you call this person to put it over to answer, show him the scripture? And what I'm saying is, the force is to grab hands. The force everybody in that congregation to grab their hands. Thank you, Mauro. Mauro, thank you. Yes, let me let me take from here. Thank you very much, Mauro. We appreciate you, Mauro. Thank you very much. You made your point. Very many thanks to you. Yes, Mauro, you heard. Yeah, yeah. As the National Public Secretary of PFN, mm. I was present in the in the meeting of forty-two fathers, including the greatest and the greatest Pentecostals you can think in Nigeria, and I was summoned to that meeting when one of these teachers were confronted and asked to explain his doctrine he was given three hours and uh, he did and fumble and was disciplined in terms of don't teach it again but that teaching is on radio now and tv and people are listening and the person is not coming to pfn again and the constitution of nigeria gives somebody Freedom, freedom of freedom. Association. association so most of the people you see teaching this thing are no more in can and no more in pfn as a member so you cannot discipline somebody who is not your member the only caveat i think a lawyer here will help me the only caveat is for fathers of faith like this to come out and confront those things so that people that have the brain will know that oh no this guy teaching that thing is not teaching so i have been present I, i've been I'm a, I'm a witness okay how some of this thank you so much Richard, for that all right let's call on the line hello good day to you hello someone's there all right, that, I, wanted to, I wanted to read Galatians mm. 1 from verse 6. Okay. Galatians 1 from verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that call you into the grace of Christ. To another gospel. 
that that is the key uh, mm. our father here mm. you help us verse 7 he said which is not another per se but there will be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of jesus would christ verse 8, yes. verse 8 said, but, but though we are an angel from heaven preach another gospel to you which have been preached let him be accursed, accursed. I think it's you that talk about the repercussion. Yes. And he said in verse 9, As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received, let him be a cause. Verse 10, For do I now persuade men of, or of God, or do I seek to please men? Or if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man that's a private interpretation mm -hmm. we're talking about for i neither received it of man neither was i taught it but by the revelation of jesus christ and and this apostle paul nailed this to the galatians so if you combine the second peter uh, that uh reverend doctor said yes, and you combine this uh, if uh, galatians chapter one so almost all the early apostles for saw for new that this kind of time will come, come. and we should like he said have discernment and mm. we should be circumspect yes. okay let's see what's here hello good day to you next call on the line yes good day we can hardly hear can you speak up a little bit oh yeah go ahead speak up speak, speak, up. Up. speak, speak up. up please uh, that's right Gabriel Okun, from where are you calling us from? From Ikoda All right, Gabriel from Ikoda Go ahead. Uh, please, I want to ask, is there any reincarnation? Is there any, any reincarnation? Is that what you're asking? Um, yes, what, what scripture what is he quoting? What scripture according, is he quoting? According to the, the Matthew 11. From Matthew 11. And Matthew 11. Matthew 11 what? Matthew 11. Yes, I've seen what he's saying. 11. 11, 14 to 16. And among them that were born of women, yes, okay. John the Baptist. And, uh, Matthew 17. Mm -hmm. Matthew 23. 10 to 16. Okay. Let, right, let, thank you very much. Let, let me help him for Matthew. Uh, there, there, is, there is no reincarnation, please. Uh, science and evolution uh, are the teachers of reincarnation. Scripture has never taught reincarnation because the bible says in the book of hebrews is appointed unto man once to die once just once and after that after that judgment. judgment so you can't come and be born twice so that you will not die twice so you you born once you die once second death is after judgment mm. and so that's background to his answer okay. but secondly what jesus was talking about this is john which was to come if he reads from verse one he was talking about the spirit and the ministry. For instance, sometimes I preach and people say, Oh, have you sat under a dowser? Yes, you mm. preach like a dowser. Mm. You know, so he's talking about the reflection of the ministry and the pattern of the call, the pattern of the call, and the, the same grace. I can carry the same grace like somebody, but I'm not the person. So he was talking that the same grace on Elijah was the same grace on John the Baptist. Why? Because these are people dealing with fire, these are people dealing with evangelistic grace making the way to the lord so he's not talking about the personality of elijah and john the baptist he's talking about the ministry and the peculiarity maybe maybe he's taking from what they say there is life after death he quoted maybe, this man but, but, um, but even when he, he, he is quoting uh, other influences or knowledge okay, may lead him may to lead think, to think is it okay. the life after death is only the eternal life yes, after uh, Jesus uh, comes after the rapture, you know, that after mm, the after rapture, rapture. That's you see, the, the, those the, are the kind of teachings that and misinterpretation of them, that is perverting the land and it comes from the occult world yes. they now make Christians to become lax to believe that if they pass this one they will come back again and rectify no Okay. You have just this one chance. So, so give like your life it. to Christ. Give your life to Jesus. And I tell you that back. right now or to, today or tomorrow, mm. because mm. the rapture that, is two. Say that again. One, and when Jesus studies and when he comes, two on your death. So, as you are alive, you have the chance to quickly come to Christ and give your life to Christ. Like they will be no chance again. Mm. Okay. 
At that time, you would sit down like Lazarus and be sit down like the rich and be begging. Be Please, asking. can I send somebody to so go and tell say no. my brother? No chance. No chance again. No chance again. Okay, but well, this should be our last call. Hello, please. Can you turn down the volume on your radio set or TV sets? Can you do that? Yes, good afternoon. All right, beautiful. Your name and location, sir. Okay, this is Justin Ekong from you. Oh, oh yeah. you. So our Justin. Justin. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I want to know, though I didn't, I didn't start from, from the beginning. I didn't get it from the beginning. Okay. But I want to know, this is a, a, a commandant topic of the thing. Uh, what about children that die, you know, Okay. Uh, that get into the age of maturity, mm. and you know, so most most doctrines don't don't teach uh, children coming communion, you know. So I want to ask, will these children still go to heaven even after you know not in communion? Then another one is this. This, uh, I think any topic we meet or we we hear over the radio, television, or wherever, maybe on uh, families and all that. I think I will I will, I will suggest. Maybe the can PSN will come out with a, maybe a program that they have to preach on these topics That's right. instead of confronting them. Instead of confront, confront because it might, you know, in the Christendom, I don't think it's proper to confront. Right. Uh, because, That's know, why we're here. Uh, people outside my start, you know, start bringing in, bringing in some, uh, you know, you know, some jingles and all that thank and all you. that. Against I, I, all right, Justin, so thank I you very much. Here. It, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. you, you, see, very you, you see, the issue yeah. of children mm. who die without communion. Mm. I, I think the basic thing that stops Sal anybody from Salvation. going to heaven is sin. Mm. And yes. if children who don't yes. know sin, what is communion? Mm. Communion mm. does not stop anybody mm. going, to, going heaven. to heaven. Mm. That's the 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 best best, answer. Best, yes. Mm. Let's mm. just do that one. Some you you only repent and be saved. You repent and be saved, but a child who does communion and does saved. not have to repent. He said, He's already bring the children unto yes, me, for yes. the, the kingdom of so God, God is God. Like, like unto them, is like unto them. And yes. then he talked about uh, this is what we're supposed to do. Yeah, yes. That's what we are that's doing. Validating already. what we are doing already. Yes, so, it's validating. So and and, 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 and uh, for the the speaker whom we know very well, I think he should also encourage. And we have more programs mm. where genuine men of God will Future. come in and the future and come in and show the falsity mm. that that is going on and mm. also show let them i'm sure some of them are watching us yeah let them know the the the, the dangers both in following and even in allowing people to follow you mm. that you 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 also face destruction in fact your your destruction as a false prophet is even worse it's even worse than even the, the, the mm. that of the followers Okay, Be, uh, yes. And uh, we don't have so much time and uh, running up now. Let me quickly uh, take an online message here. Uh, this one came in from uh, Professor Eko Eko on wow. last week's topic. And uh, he said, in fact, he asked me, he, make sure, he said I should make sure okay. that I read this message <laughs> in this edition because he couldn't take it last week. He says, um, uh, Brother Etub, I listened to parts of your defense of the gospel today. That was last week, mm. dealing on faith. Faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross is sufficient for salvation. The thief on the cross had had that <clears throat> much faith in, um, in whatever he was using. That was why he made use of it. He said, Jesus' baptism was meant to identify the Messiah to Israel, the only one that the Spirit descended on, and the Father spoke to Jesus. Jesus came under the law of Moses and had to fulfill all righteousness. Water baptism is old covenant. In the new covenant, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. A uh, new birth in the work of the Holy Spirit, not of the flesh. Romans 8, um, 7, it said, In Christ we have the life in the Spirit, not the flesh, which is so like not. So we can represent. go naked to church. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> because of so, Yes, we are all in the Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, if we have to repeat mm. everything Christ did, why did he have to come? Even the Old Testament tells us that our righteousness is as a filthy rag. Professor, Cole, it was let, 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 let me reach out to let me have Prof. I know where mm. Prof is coming from. Mm. Thank God he even believed in baptism. What's baptism by water? Mm. What's baptism by water? It's simply the physical demonstration mm. of what took place in the spirit at salvation. Mm -hmm. So we die with him, 
Very. And, and, and then we resurrected. So, so, Prof, that, that's <laughs> a simple. We are doing a demonstration, <laughs> and then we are also doing a confession. <laughs> Those days, when people were taken to the river to be baptized, it was a clear view, just like you talk about Jesus. That oh, you are now of Christ. Oh, so you are now one, two, three, four from this village. You are no more going to idol worship <laughs> because you are now Christian. So, so there's nothing wrong in bringing our confession, which is physical. To also a demonstration which is baptism. baptism. So, Prof, I, I stand to correct you that baptism is a sacrament, is a is duty, is an ordinance that should be done by Christians. But just like maybe what you are trying to say is that it is not baptism that saved us. Yes, mm. It yes. is after salvation because mm. Bible says repent and mm. be baptized. Yeah. Just so, the prof, yes. mm. so, I think, Prof, you are making you are mixing, you're mixing the two yeah. things. Uh, is there, uh, you don't put the, the horse before what do they call it? The cart. The cart for the horse. So, 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 always be the horse. So the, first. Uh, yeah, it's a then horse. The so, it's the salvation <laughs> in Christ. We thank you for that, but not for to illegitimize uh, baptism. It is a good demonstration. Okay, um, gentlemen, I, it's about time because it's almost uh, there. But let's check so a soon. few few words of advice. <laughs> 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 it's always so soon. Yeah. A few words of advice, a final word to you know our listeners, our viewers right now about you no know, scripture is of any interpretation of a private interpre interpretation as it were. The topic of today, your last words, sir. Well, my own is back to what Kant has already quoted, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, profitable to doctrine and of correction. And the same verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's the purpose of scripture. So it shouldn't be uh, subjected to private interpretation because it's inspired by God. For perfection. Yeah, from the perspective of Kant, like somebody said, uh, we had recently planned, except for some some subversions by still uh, people, men of God in quote, you know that uh, some of the, uh, the the churches, like somebody was asking a question, we will begin to check through the blocks that some of these interpretations, some of these uh, uh, proliferations of uh, uh, ministries and all that, they will now begin to be called to order and then advise them if can really even if it is not in the national constitution but they should be that is why like we are project. existing mm -hmm. uh, that I, look block head block leader tell these people bl bring them let them know the proper way to conduct themselves and all that and uh, like he was talking about discipline and but we are trying to do it and we pray god will give us the grace to okay. do that well as uh, also let me follow the cue as can advise me mm -hmm. i'll advise those false prophets to avert themselves to that second peter chapter 2 verse 12 to 17 uh that is this other one the second one which uh, says that but this like irrational animals creatures mm. of instinct mm. born to be caught and killed reviling in matters of which they are ignorant would be destroyed in the same destruction with them suffering wrong for their wrong doing mm. all right for this wrong doing going around misinterpreting the bible souls. The souls you will face destruction and i advise you stay off let's the people follow Christ in a simple and orderly manner and get their soul salvation. Thank you. All right, the very Reverend Dr. Tuekon Oku, many thanks. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Reverend Dr. Duese Ekwere, thank you so much, sir. Who is also the area chairman of United Evangelical okay. Church. You refuse to <laughs> 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 your area conference. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop. Thank you so much, Bishop uh, Emma. God bless you for your time. But thank just you. before you leave, 15 seconds, a prayer for Aquibum State, our viewers right now, and even our listeners. Sir. Okay, thanks for that opportunity. I stand in agreement with the Khan chairman who is here with us in the studio and the Reverend Dr. Twekong and all believers in Aquibum State. We pray for our country, Nigeria, that is boiling now. Let there be peace Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for Governor Udomi Manuel and his wife, Her Excellency. We pray for them that God give this man wisdom to lead Akwaibom to another level, even as you are already helping him. Father, thank you for all Christians in Akwaibom, in Nigeria. Let them not be prayer to false teaching and doctrines. Yes. 
thank you, Holy Spirit, for using this message today to reach out to our generation. In Jesus' name, we bless the studio, AKBC, your DG, and we bless Commissioner for Information, we bless our presenter and producer, and all the staff, even the cameramen and women, and those watching us, be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So that's our show. Thank you so much for your time. Let's do it again next week. My name is Etu Ikon. Bye-bye. On behalf of Elder Koko Imadu, the producer of this program. Bye. <laughs> Wall Power, this is an hour to exist of God's work and to view open team. Wall Power, disorganized, system destabilized, and economy crumbling. The solution rests with the church rising up as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But there is a scarcity of God's word and there are few open visions. But do not worry, men and women have risen in a generation where diverse elements tend to pervert the cause of the gospel with the undiluted concentration of God's word to change the narrative and defend the gospel. It's powerful, inspiring, inciting, soul-lifting, Bible-focused program, The Defense of the Gospel. The Defense of the Gospel is an interdenominational TV program that features seasoned and sound gospel ministers with the aim of providing biblical answers to doctrinal issues and questions. Sponsored by Remedy for Victims of Religious Persecution and Discrimination, RVRPND. Airing on Thursdays on AKBC TV, 2 p.m. and Saturdays, 5 p.m. AKBC Radio, Saturdays, 4 p.m. Watch live on Facebook at The Defense of the Gospel and G247 TV. YouTube at G247 TV. For inquiries, contact The Defense 2020 at gmail.com or call 0903-078-2550. The Defense of the Gospel. Sound biblical Sound answers biblical to simple answers. Simple doctrinal questions. <laughs> Wall power disorganized, system destabilized, and economy crumbling. The solution rests with the church rising up as the salt of the earth and the light of the world. But there is a scarcity of God's word and there are few open visions. But do not worry, men and women have risen in a generation 